Hey, how's it going? Today I'm coming to you from the Monster Lab and I'm doing so for a specific reason because I've been playing with some really freaky ideas in my head. It's brought up by Scott Adams, the guy that created the Dilbert comic strip and he's written several books and he talks about a, a concept, a theory that he's heard that we may all be living in a computer simulation. All of this is just a simulation. We are a simulation. We're not a real species. But a uh, computer generated simulation set up by higher intelligence beings. And they say this is mathematically more likely than we were one of the real species. I know, it sounds crazy. But check this out. I'm going somewhere. Way, way back when The Matrix first came out, I remember a buddy of mine asked me, he said, you know, what if this really is The Matrix? Ah, that he was 20 years ahead of his time. What if this is really The Matrix? And we're just plugged into some computer simulation. And I told him, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. If, if you jump off a cliff, you're going to smash to pieces at the bottom. If you don't pay your taxes, the IRS is going to come after you. And if you eat something that's bad, you're going to get sick. All these things stay the same. So the concept is, it doesn't matter whether this is actually real or not. What matters is what you can do with it. Okay? And if you start thinking about it, being a simulation, you know, the law of attraction, all that freaky religion stuff, some of it starts to get really weird. Keep with me. The reason this is so important is because you can begin to understand that everyone lives in their own brain-generated reality. In other words, when I look at something and you look at something, we see the same thing or very close, but we interpret it differently based on the programs and the filters in our brain that are there because of the way we were brought up, our environment, what we think about, and so on. And it's critical to understand this concept because when you are attempting to influence other people, which is on your stuff because you're in business and you want to let them know that what you've got will solve their challenge, whatever it is. If you're attempting to speak to them from your set of filters, you will likely fail to influence them because they don't see things the way you do. And this is a big mistake that most people, I dare I say all marketers when they first start out, they start talking about things from their point of view. The wonderful thing about the internet is you come across so many people that there's bound to be a large number that think just real close to the way you do, so you can still make money. But that's not exactly what we're after. What we're after is assisting the largest number of people possible to find our product or service and buy it because it will improve their lives. So learning that your way of thinking, your way of looking at things is far different than the vast majority of other people will allow you then to understand you've got to get into their mind what they're thinking about, what they're dreaming about, what they're afraid of. And once you do, you'll be able to far more effectively speak to them in their language about what they're interested in. And I know that these some of these things are pretty heavy and it's cool. You can you can get on my email list and you can read my blog or watch my videos and I keep talking about the same stuff because it's very interesting and it's very effective. So think about it. Whether you accept the idea that we're living in a simulation or not, do accept the fact that in order to speak to the largest number of people, you've got to learn to speak to people in their language. That's all I got for today. Signing off from the Monster Lab. 
I'm out.